Yo, what's up? Dr. Swole here, MD bodybuilder, back with another video. Today I'm gonna to be giving you some tips on how to sleep better. Now, I think recovery is one of the most underrated aspects of bodybuilding, and a big component of that is sleep. Now, if your goals are to lose fat and build muscle, there is actually research saying that people who sleep less are more likely to be overweight, and they're more likely to lose muscle mass when they're dieting. Personally, I find that whenever I have compromised sleep, my muscle gains come grinding to a halt. So it falls that I think sleep is really important and I prioritize it a lot. In fact, when people ask me how I'm so productive during the day, I actually think that sleep is a big factor in it. And in general, it makes sense to optimize sleep since we spend so much of our time doing it. I'm just gonna pull up a poll that I put out a week ago asking you guys how much you sleep. And it looks like most of you sleep about seven to eight hours a night. That's like a third of your 24 hours. So today I'm gonna to give you some practical tips on how you can improve your sleep so you can lose fat, build muscle, and just be more productive overall. In general, you could categorize these tips into sleep hygiene, stimulus control, and minimizing rumination. If that sounds good to you, smash that like button, hit subscribe, and let's get right into it. Now, first of all, I just wanna introduce sleep hygiene. This is something we prescribe a lot as doctors, and it basically describes a number of practices that help people to get an improved quality of their sleep. A lot of this has to do with teaching your body to sleep when it's supposed to. And the first tip that I wanna share is to have a regular wake time. This is super important, especially now since a lot of people are at home and their clocks are all over the place. The problem, as you know, is if you stay up really late one night and sleep in really late the next day, you're not gonna be tired to fall asleep the following night. So when possible, I know there are gonna be exceptions when you have special events and such, but I usually try and keep my wake times to within plus or minus one hour when possible. Having a regular schedule is going to prime your body for sleep when it is time for you to go to bed at night. Now notice that I emphasize wake time rather than when you actually go to sleep at night. And I think getting up in the morning is the important part because if you get up early in the morning, you're gonna feel tired at night eventually. And even if you don't fall asleep the first night when you wake up early, you will get tired in a few days. My next tip is to avoid screen time before bed. Now the problem with screens is that they produce a lot of blue light, which suppresses the amount of melatonin that your body produces. The importance of melatonin is that it influences your body's circadian rhythm, which is basically your internal clock. And if you have a lot of this blue light just before bed, it signals to your body that it's still daytime and not time to go to sleep. So for example, try to avoid watching TV just before bed. And if you do have to use your phone or laptop, try and use a light filter. Some people will use blue light blocking glasses. I prefer to use software to do that. So there are a few free programs that you can download for your laptop that will shift the light profile of your laptop screen when it gets close to bedtime. My next tip for how to improve your sleep is to keep the bedroom dark. This runs along the same line of reasoning as my tip on avoiding screen time. You're trying to set your internal clock. So there are a couple of things to do for this one. You can get blackout curtains, which help a lot in blocking out street lights that are outside. And you should also try and cover up any lights that are inside your room. So if you have any appliances like printers with little blinking lights on them, I would suggest covering those up however you want. So for example, my laptop charger has a little light on it, so I will usually just throw a book over it to block off the light. For other devices, for example, my Wi-Fi expander, I will cover up the little light with some electrician's tape. Another way you can get on top of your internal clock is to actually take melatonin. The best application of melatonin is to use it to keep a regular schedule. What I mean is that if your sleep schedule gets deranged for whatever reason, melatonin might be helpful to pull your schedule back into its usual routine. For example, if I stayed up late for a few nights on the weekend and I need to get up early on Monday for work, on Sunday night, I might take melatonin about an hour before my planned bedtime. Note that melatonin is not meant to be something that puts you to sleep every night on a chronic basis, but it's something that can help put your schedule back on track. My next tip is to try and avoid naps. Now this is a pretty gray area and it depends a lot on the person as well as how tired you actually are. So if I actually am in a big sleep deficit, I will take a nap, but in general, I'll try to avoid napping, especially in the evening or longer than 20 minutes. Now the problem with napping later in the day is that your body will feel relatively rested when it is time to go to bed and you're probably gonna have more trouble falling asleep. My general rule for myself is that I don't nap after 4 p.m. My general recommendation is that if you can, skip the nap and just go to sleep earlier instead. Next tip is to have a pre-sleep routine. 
Now the importance of this is it primes your body for sleep. When you have a pre-bed ritual that you follow every night, it teaches your body that when you go through those activities, it's time to get sleepy. So for myself, every night before I go to bed, I'll pack my bag for the next day, whether it's my gym bag or my work bag. I'll have a bedtime snack, which usually consists of a protein shake with my creatine and multivitamin and some other food, depending on what state of dieting I'm in. And then I'll use the washroom and brush my teeth. It's important to put activities in this routine that are relaxing. Next strategy for improving your sleep is to minimize your awake activities in bed. Now this tip has to do with stimulus control. The problem with staying awake and doing things in bed is that your body eventually associates the bed with being awake and it'll make it more difficult for you to fall asleep. So in general, I'd recommend using the bed only for sleep and sex. No reading, no TV, or working in bed. That way, when you do hit the sack at night, when your head hits the pillow, your body's gonna say, okay, every time we go to this place, we sleep. So that's what we're gonna do now. On a similar note, my next tip is that you shouldn't be lying awake in bed. If you're just lying there awake, your body's going to associate the bed with staying awake. Plus, you're probably gonna feel more pressure to sleep and this will drive up your anxiety and make it even harder. So my general recommendation is that if you're awake for more than 30 minutes in your bed, get up and do something relaxing. My personal spin on this is try and do something that also feels productive. The effects of this will be twofold. First of all, you're actually gonna get something productive done. And plus, when you do something productive, you're gonna feel more accomplished at the end of it and you'll be more relaxed and ready to sleep. So examples of this might be reading or writing or studying or working on some sort of paperwork or setting out your clothes for the next day. Try to avoid stimulating activities like watching TV or playing video games. My next sleep tip is that if you're having trouble sleeping, restrict your sleep overall. Going off my last tip, if you can't sleep for half an hour or longer, get up, do something relaxing and productive and continue that activity until you feel sleepy. When you do feel sleepy, go back to bed. And if that happens again, feel free to just repeat the process. I think it's important to not be afraid of restricting the amount of sleep you're getting. First of all, you're doing something productive when you get up, so that time isn't wasted. Second of all, when you restrict your sleep overall, even if you don't sleep much tonight, you will in a couple of days. So often I'll hear people telling me that, oh, I was in bed for eight hours, but I only slept for four or five hours. My response to that is why don't you just spend five hours in bed, sleep solidly for those five hours, and in a few days, you're probably gonna be tired enough that you'll need the extra hours anyways. Okay, my next couple of tips have to do with reducing rumination. So I think a big problem a lot of people have is that they're lying in bed awake thinking about things. So my next tip is to write things down. This actually plays a big role in my life. I find that when you write something down, you put it on paper and take it off your mind. The best ways to do this to improve your sleep is that if you can't sleep at night and you're worried about things or you're just ruminating, get up and write down what you're worrying about on a piece of paper and write out some solutions. This will do two things. First of all, it'll get things off your mind. And second of all, you'll get a jump start on a productive way towards solving those problems. Following that same line of reasoning, my next tip is to plan the next day. I find that this one helps a lot because it's a lot easier for me to relax when I know that I'm all set up to be productive the next day. The ways I'll organize this is in a to-do list or a calendar. I'll write down four or five main things that I wanna get done the next day. And often I'll also actually pencil in times for doing that in my calendar app. This doesn't have to be super granular, but I basically just have a rough idea of what I'm gonna be getting done the next day and when. Now in summary, my tips for improving your sleep quality are to keep a regular schedule, try and put yourself into a favorable state for sleep, and try to be productive in a relaxing way when you can't sleep. If you try out these tips and you still have trouble sleeping, you should go see a doctor because there could be some other underlying issue. That's all for now guys. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, make sure you hit like and leave me a comment below. I'm really good about answering every single one of my comments, so I'll definitely get back to you. In particular, comment below with what you do for your pre-bed routine. If you haven't already, subscribe and we'll see you next time.